What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can I give him, give my heart. Hello and welcome to chapter four of the story of the fourth wise man by Henry van Dyke. For the past three weeks, we've been learning about the fourth wise man who has finally arrived in the little town of Bethlehem. He looked for someone from whom he could get directions, but the streets were deserted. All the doors were shut and the windows shuttered. There was no sign of life in the town. Then as he listened, he heard the sound of soft singing. It was the sound of a mother trying to soothe her baby. He knocked gently on the door. The door opened just a crack to show the terrified face of a young woman. He explained what he was seeking and she let him into the house, closing the door quickly behind him. She held a beautiful baby in her arms. She explained that st three strangers had arrived three days ago. They had come to see a baby born at the other end of town, but then they had gone away very suddenly. There were rumours that the soldiers of King Herod were angry, so everyone was hiding indoors. Artaban started to leave, thanking the young mother for her help, when suddenly there was a loud crash and into the room burst one of the king's soldiers. His eye caught sight of the baby in his mother's arms. At the same time, screams came from the other houses in the village. Help! Help! They're trying to take my baby! Artaban must do something, but what? The Roman soldier had drawn his sword. The mother cowered in the distant corner, holding the baby in her arms. There was terror in her eyes. The next moment, Artaban found himself positioned between the soldier of King Herod and the woman and her child. Stop, Artaban speaks quietly. I will make it worth your while to pass this home by. Do the child no harm and I will give you this. Artaban reached into his robe and pulled out the ruby, the ruby that was as red as a sunset. The soldier looked at the wonderful gem. He looked at the terrified woman, then snatching the jewel, stepped back through the doorway and disappeared down the street. The woman hugged her baby as though she would never let it go. Tears of relief flooded her face. Artaban was glad and sad. He had saved the baby, but now he had only one gift left to give the child born to be king and he did not know where to find him, and worse yet, he did not know whether the child he sought had survived the Holocaust. What shall he do? Let's find out next week. What does the Bible tell us about the Magi who did reach the king? Read about it in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 18. What a terrifying time in Bethlehem. The great big Roman soldiers attacking poor innocent little children. Let's put him on. Uh, we'll put him there, I think. And there's a mother with her baby trying to keep it safe. We'll have that there. And then we've got Artaban going off again on his camel. It's the same picture that I used down here, but facing the other way. You might need to revolve some of the pictures to turn them round to do what you want them to do. So let's put him on back on his travels. He's going on up that path. What 
can we do when things are unfair? There's always something we can do. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Amen. See you next time.